Greetings, fellow mathematicians. For this problem, our focus is not going to be on solving the problem. For a power series approach, the solution here is the recurrence relation. That's not our focus. We're going to focus on a theoretical question. Earlier in our course, or in any differential equations course, you learn that a second order differential equation should always have two linearly independent solutions. So when we use a power series solution, your linear combination of y1 and y2 all just get combined into a single function. And y here, that power series, is the power series representation for that combined function c1y1 plus c2y2. Well, if we use a power series approach, how do we figure out what our two linearly independent solutions are. Now, make sure you're comfortable going through the work here. Pause the video, work this out if needed. Very straightforward from our previous problems. We get two conditions here using a combination of shifting indices, shifting everything to x to the n minus two, as well as writing out terms. And we get these conditions that c2 equals zero, and more importantly, our recurrence relation. That is going to be where this video starts from, how we use this to figure out what y1 and y2 are, our two linearly independent solutions. So before you get to the next part, make sure you are comfortable arriving at that on your own. If so, let's get to how we find y1 and y2. We're now ready to see how to extract two linearly independent solutions from a single power series solution for y. Now this differential equation had no initial conditions, but that's okay. Think back earlier when you solved homogeneous ODEs without initial conditions. Your complementary solution had two unknowns or parameters, C1 and C2, the integration constants. Here, without initial conditions, that means we're gonna have two unknowns or parameters in our solutions now they're going to be c sub zero and c sub one coefficients in our power series solution. We did have another condition that we found, the fact that c sub two equals zero. So c sub zero, that's some value, which we don't know. c sub one, again, some other value, but c sub two is zero. Let's go ahead to now figuring out the value for c sub three. Without initial conditions, all these other higher index coefficients, we're going to determine them in terms of c sub zero and c sub one. So let's iterate our recurrence relation. Plug in now n equals three. It looks like we get minus, that's going to give us c sub zero, and that's three times two. And at best, we simplify this as it looks like negative one sixth. times c sub zero. Again, if we had initial conditions, we would have the value for c sub zero, which would then give us the value for c sub three. All right, let's go ahead and iterate again to get the value for c sub four. We're gonna plug in our index here now as four. So plug in n as four, we get c sub one, and that's gonna give us now in the denominator four times three. And it looks like we can simplify that as negative 1 12th times c sub one. All right, if you were to iterate to get the value for c sub five, plug in n as five, you get here c sub two, but c sub two is zero. That's gonna increment forward to make c sub five zero. And if you notice your recurrence relation, your coefficients here differ by three index values. There's a pattern emerging here. The fact that c sub two equals zero, three coefficients later, we get zero. And you should find three more coefficients later, c sub eight will also be zero. And it looks like we can observe a pattern which we get two non-zero coefficients followed by a zero coefficient. And that seems to hold. Two non-zero coefficients followed by a zero so we should expect two more non-zero coefficients before 
c sub 8, which is 0. All right, so let's iterate two more times. We're going to plug in n as 6. So it looks like we're going to get c sub 3. And then in your denominator there, it looks like we get 6 times 5. We have the value for c sub 3. And just be careful, notice we have a negative and a negative. 6 and 5, 30 times another 6. Looks like we get positive 1 over 180 times c sub 0. And we're going to iterate one last time. Now plugging into the recurrence relation, n equals 7. And we get a minus. Be careful with your subscripts. Even though this is differential equations, I always screw up with basic math. Looks like 7 minus 3 will give me c sub 4. And plugging in n of 7, we get 7 times 6 there. And again, be careful. Plug in the value for c sub 4. We get a negative times a negative. And it looks like if you multiply your factors all in the denominator, 7, 6, and 12, looks like we should get positive 1 over 504. And that's times c sub 1. All right, and that's probably enough for us to conclude what we want, how to extract your two linearly independent solutions. Notice here, all the non-zero coefficients are either in terms of c sub 0 or c sub 1. So let's go ahead and plug these in. We don't know the value for c sub 0, but it's some value. Same goes for c sub 1, but we do know c sub 2 is 0. All right, we'll plug that in. c sub 3, we have that as negative 1, 6. c sub 0, c 4 is negative 1 over 12 times c 1. c sub 5, that's 0. c sub 6, 1 over 180 c sub 0, and then c sub 7, 1 over 504, c sub 1, and again, three more coefficients later, c sub 8 is 0. Now, some of your coefficients are 0. The rest of them are either in terms of c sub 0 or c sub 1. Let's just go ahead and factor out c sub 0 from all these terms. All right, and we'll take it slowly, factor out c sub 0. We're going to be left with 1. Go to your next term that has c sub 0. We have minus 1 sixth. That's multiplying x cubed. And it looks like we should be able to go three more coefficients to where we have a c sub 0. Looks like that's here on the x to the sixth term. So that's going to be plus. 1 over 180, x to the 6. If you were to keep going, you can probably see that there's a pattern. The coefficients will alternate signs. So the next one probably should be a minus. But we'll leave it at that from the coefficients that we found. All right, and the other non-zero terms are in terms of c sub 1. So let's factor out everything with a c sub 1 in it. We have our first one here. So we'll be left with x. Look for your next term with c sub 1. That should be three ter uh, terms or coefficients later. So c sub 1, we have that here on the x to the fourth term. So that's going to be minus 1 over 12 x to the fourth. And three coefficients or terms later, we should have another c sub 1, 1, 2, 3, right there. Looks like that's going to be plus 1 over 504 x to the seventh. And again, we expect the next one, next coefficient or term should have a negative, but we could figure that out if we wanted to. And notice what we have here. We have a constant times a bunch of stuff. Another constant times a bunch of stuff. 
I have no idea what this function is, but that is a power series representation for some function. We'll call that y1. And the same thing here, this power series represents some other function, we'll call it y2. And we now have our solution written with constants times y1 and y2, where we have y1 and y2 as these power series representations. Now, to be completely correct, we have not proven mathematically that these functions actually are linearly independent. That would require a lot more work beyond the scope of what I want to cover or would cover in my differential equations course, but that's probably enough to at least justify how we can extract those two solutions there. If we wanted to go into more detail, we could try to prove that they actually are linearly independent, but we're not going to worry about that. All right, so we answered our question, how with a single power series, we extract two linearly independent solutions. And if we trace back where that came from, it came from this pattern, two non-zero coefficients followed by a zero coefficient. And notice half those non-zero coefficients are in terms of C sub zero, the other half in terms of C sub one. And that translates forward to being able to factor out c sub zero and c sub one from the terms left that are not zero. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.